So my name is Serena Rabassi and I'm the CEO of Galdem. Galdem was um, created just to showcase the stories of people that are of colour. Could you describe what you do in 15 words or fewer? We are committed to making sure that we showcase the voices of those that are typically underrepresented within the media industry. We're super proud also because we give many people their first byline. We were known for our magazine, but we're actually so much more than that. We're actually a media company. What advice would you give to a 10 year old you? I would give the advice of back yourself. Um, I think backing yourself is really important. To be fair, I kind of did that as a 10 year old. I was very, very confident. And I would also give the advice of ask for what you want. Who would play you in a movie of your life? <laughs> Who would play me in a movie of my life? Can I play myself? Is that, is that possible? There's no kind of actor that's really standing out to me that I feel is worthy enough. <laughs> is there anything that you'd like to achieve that you haven't yet? I would love for us to get to a point where we've got local voices in every single territory across the globe. Like that is kind of like the goal. I want absolutely every single person on the planet to have access to us. The people that need to have access to us because they just feel like they don't see themselves represented. I'm not just talking about like phenotypically, you know, I think we have to kind of get away from that notion of kind of representation literally just being like ethnicity or gender. I'm also like talking in regards to like actually do I see someone that has the same ethos? Where we want to get to is where we actually change policies from a standpoint where we're not actually working with the government but we can create such a huge noise where you know a bit like a Marcus Rashford for instance where we can actually change people's lives because the government actually start paying attention. If you could immediately put right one injustice in the UK what would it be and why? It would be about us having more of a conversation around class. You know, class isn't even a protected characteristic in the UK. And because of that, people can actually discriminate against people based on their class and there's nothing legally to protect them. I think a lot of the conversations um, that were born out of the Black Lives Matter movement have had a direct result in us having more of a conversation around class within the mainstream, actually. Even like the reframing of like the working class, it's now being framed as working people and there's more of a discourse than there definitely was two, three years ago. Which is the most important human right to you? There's no universal human right. It, do it doesn't exist because if it did exist, people wouldn't be drowning in, you know, the channel trying to get over here. So I couldn't like, wouldn't be able to pinpoint one human right in particular. I think it's just us acknowledging each other as full humans, as we all are. And with that comes the full breadth of what human rights should be. Do you have any ideas about how to heal the divisions in society right now? I think actually it starts with the conversations around class. I do believe that class is one of the few identities that sit across all different walks of people. Class exists in three ways. You've got your economic, you've got your social, and you have got your cultural. Now, what we do at Galdem, we give people opportunities that don't have that inherited, um, you know, black book that some people acquire from their families. And I think if we can unite, which we're seeing, you know, with, you know, obviously trade unions have always existed. We've just unionized, which I'm feeling so proud about. And um, so, yeah, I think it's us acknowledging how class is the governing tool that has suppressed the vast majority of us with the exception of the landed elite class.